this video, we're going to focus on how do you solve polynomial equations by using factoring. So there's other ways to solve polynomial equations, but factoring is often the quickest and easiest way to do that. So let's start with something like this. 3x to the fourth minus 48x squared. All right, so whenever you're solving an equation like this, the only time um, you don't use this first technique is with a linear equation. We want to pull everything to one side of the equation. Set it equal to zero. For a linear equation, remember when the highest degree is just one, we want all your x terms on one side, all your constants on the other. Here, we want to rearrange it so everything is on one side of the equation. And it's set equal to zero. So I think that would look like 3x to the fourth minus 48x squared is equal to zero. Okay, so next we're going to look at factoring techniques. So what is the very first thing that you can do when you're thinking about factoring? Always look for what? A GCF. So if I'm looking at these two terms here and I say to myself, self, is there a GCF in this situation? I see that 3 goes into both 3 and 48, and we have an x squared in both of these. So my GCF is 3x squared times what is equal to 0? Divide out the 3x squared from 3x to the fourth, and we have x squared. Divide the negative 48x squared by 3x squared, we have minus 16. Okay, and now we have something that we recognize as a difference of squares, which factors a little further. 3x squared times x plus 4 so x minus 4 is equal to 0. A fully factored polynomial. Take each of these factors, set them each equal to 0, and we would have x equals 0 here, x equals negative 4 here, and x equals positive 4 here. So our solution set would be 0, negative 4, and positive 4. All right, so the next example we're going to look at is something like this. 3x cubed minus 12x is equal to negative 2x squared plus 8. Polynomial, mixed um, degrees on two sides of the equation. Always move it over to one side of the equation. We're going to push it all, all over to the left. And then we're going to um, put it in standard form. We're going to do that all in one step. So we're going to add the 2x squared, we're going to subtract the 8, and that should look like this. 3x cubed plus 2x squared minus 12x minus 8 equals 0. Fantastic. Okay, so now we've got this 4 term cubic. Um, what's the first thing that should come to your mind? Factor by grouping. Looking at these first two terms, I see x squared can come out of both. So it, I would have a 3x plus 2. Keep this minus, and I look at 12x and 8. What's the GCF there? I believe that to be 4. And we have what? Um, negative 12x divided by negative 4 is 3x. Negative 8 divided by negative 4 is plus 2. So 3x plus 2 is equal to 0. Taking the GCF out of these two groups, I have 3x plus 2 times x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. Difference of squares factors a little bit more. So 3x plus 2, x plus 2, x minus 2 equals 0. And now fully factored, we can easily find the solutions here. x is equal to negative 2 thirds when I set this one equal to 0 x is equal to negative 2 when I set this one equal to 0, and x is equal to 2 here. So our solution set, negative 2, negative 2 thirds, and 2. Okay, for this example, we're going to start the same way. Let's look at bringing everything to one side of the equal sign, and that should look like this. 2x to the fourth minus 16x is equal to 0. Again, first rule of factoring, we're thinking about GCF. And it looks like with these two terms, I can pull out or divide out a 2x, and I would have x cubed minus 8 is equal to 0. Now, it looks like, hmm, I think that this is a difference of cubes. So we have to use that sum and difference of cubes pattern. 
believe that to be the cube root of the first term. Use the same sign. The cube root of the second term. So we have a binomial here. And then we build this trinomial from this. Square multiply square. And then the signage in this trinomial is going to be uh, opposite sign. So this is negative, this would be positive, and this is always positive. And you may know this acronym, same, opposite, always, positive, to remind you of the correct signs. So now I need to look at um, setting each of these factors equal to zero. This one, easy, x is equal to zero. This one, easy, x is equal to 2. This one, not so easy because it doesn't factor any further, which means I need to go on and use the quadratic formula. So x here is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. And that whole thing is all over 2 times a. All right, let's clean this bad boy up. Negative 2 plus or minus radical 4 minus 4 times 1 times 4, 16 all over 2. All right, keep simplifying. 2 plus or minus ne radical negative 12 all over 2. All right. Keep going. When we simplify radical negative 12, it's 2i radical 3. 2 plus or minus 2i radical 3. Which then we can simplify into this piece, 1 plus or minus this piece, i radical 3. So what is our solution set for this whole big equation? We have Four solutions, 0, 2, 1 plus i radical 3, and 1 minus i radical 3. For this example, we have x to the fourth minus 5x squared plus 4 is equal to 0. We can use our, um, using a u substitution technique that we talked about when we talked about quadratics. And if you're unfamiliar with that technique, you can use it any time an equation is in what's called quadratic form. We recognize something in quadratic form when the power of the first term is exactly double the power of the second term. And when that is the case, we make this um, statement that u is equal to, that kind of sounds weird, right? u is equal to the middle variable portion, x squared u squared then is equal to this thing squared. And it's always going to end up being what's in front. And then we rewrite this equation in terms of u. So x to the fourth is u squared minus 5 times x squared is equal to u plus 4 equals 0. Now we're in a strictly quadratic equation. So let's see, I think this factors to u minus 4 u minus 1 is equal to 0, and u is equal to 4, and u is equal to 1. But this does not actually solve the equation because our original equation was written in terms of x. So now we substitute back in our x. What was u equal to? u was equal to x squared. So let's put it back. x squared equals 4, and x squared is equal to 1. We don't put this back in at all because we don't have a u squared here. All we have is u and u. So now solve these. If x squared is 4, then x is plus or minus 2, the square root of 4. If x squared is 1, then x is equal to plus or minus 1. So our solution set, negative 2, negative 1, positive 1, positive 2, and we're good to go. Last example over here, same kind of thing. We're going to move everything to one side of the equation, and it looks like 
one power is exactly double the other, so we can use that same technique. 9x squared, or to the fourth, sorry, minus 25x squared plus 16 all equal to 0. Okay, so u is equal to x squared, u squared is equal to x to the fourth, so this would be 9u squared minus 25u plus 16 equals to 0. I think, let's take a look here. Hmm, how does this factor? So this factors in 9u minus 16 and u minus 1 is equal to 0. Solve each of those for u. u is equal to 16 over 9 and u is equal to 1. Now let's go back and put our x's back into the equation. x squared is equal to 16 over 9, and x squared is equal to 1. What does that make x equal to? The square root of this thing, which is plus or minus. What's the square root of 16? That's 4. What's the square root of 9? That's 3. Here, x is equal to plus or minus 1, taking the square root of 1. So my solution set, when it's all said and done, negative 4 thirds, negative 1, positive 1, and positive 4 thirds. Um, good to note that anytime you have a polynomial, you're going to have uh, the same number of zeros or same number of solutions as your highest power. So you should be looking for that as you're solving. All right, we'll look at more techniques in solving polynomial equations next time. See you then.